Great relationships don't just happen, they're designed. But how do you get the love you really want when you haven't had the models and examples you needed? We've learned the hard way that talking about stuff can change everything, but it doesn't come naturally, and that's normal. Welcome to the Project Relationship Podcast. I'm Dr. Jolie Hamilton. And I'm Ken Hamilton. Join us as we explore the ups and downs of creating a custom-built love. We'll get personal and talk about what's worked for us, hear from Jolie about what the research can teach us about love, and answer listener questions. It's time to reimagine relationships from the ground up. Welcome to the Project Relationship Podcast. Hi, everybody. Today, we want to talk about something fun. 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 We're going to talk about fun. <laughs> it's As soon as you say it like that, right away I'm set up for disappointment. Okay, so step one of having fun, <laughs> lower your expectations. Oh, no. <laughs> well, that brings up the question of, of what is fun. I mean, I don't mean what, what are the list of fun things, but what does fun feel like to you? Oh, okay. Thanks for asking it that way. That's helpful. Um, sometimes I think I don't know. I, as a person who definitely leans toward pr like productivity as like the, mm. like the center of my life. I see. Um, and I have to do a lot of work to keep myself from centering how productive am I? Um, it can be hard to know what fun is. I do know this. I laugh more when I'm having fun. Like my whole life up here, like it's as though the laugh track picks up. And um, I, I feel that scattered throughout my day. And uh, when I'm having fun, I know that I am myself. I'm not trying to, like, control you or fix what the kids are doing oh, yeah, or okay. trying to anticipate what Monday is going to bring. I'm just, I'm enjoying I'm, I'm enjoying it. So like I'm, I'm in it. So I don't want to like, it's, it's not just about being in the moment, but there definitely is a presence and an in the momentness. Um, okay. I can, I can be embraced by the moment. That's okay. So I hear you saying that, you know, you know how to tell when you're having fun. I can tell yeah, when that, I'm having that fun. You, you hear, you feel laughter, you feel present. Um, you feel like yourself. That's nice to hear. Yeah. Everybody likes that. What about you? What's fun? Um, so I don't quite have the same issue you were describing about um, productivity, but I have something kind of close. Um, I So fun is defined partially as not doing something that I'm supposed to be doing. Ah, so the anti-should. Yeah, the anti should. Um, so I should be doing this. And so, so you if you can define anything that's not what you should be doing as fun, not quite. <laughs> no, <laughs> not anything. Um, but that's that's kind of how how things. Well, oh, that's well, like you said, it, it's um, like being present is necessary but not sufficient. It's not all there is. Right. Same thing. Okay, so. This is where I think I get a little confused because there are huge swaths of my life that are both productive and fun. And then there's parts of my life that are productive and not fun. Mm -hmm. And then there are parts of my life that are productive and are enjoyable, but I wouldn't call them fun. They're, they're pr like the productivity is what makes them enjoyable. So there's definitely nuance here. But mm -hmm. all of that aside... Then there's stuff that's just fun. And I'm, I think using this word is interesting. It's not just pleasure. Yep. Because yeah, right. be, like I, we've talked about pleasure. We're going to talk about pleasure more and more. But fun, um, there's a playfulness, Play, right? Right. Playfulness. Playful joy, maybe. Joy, uh, presence. Yeah. So we're coming around to the same idea. Pleasure. So fun to me is pleasurable, but not all pleasure winds up going into what I would call fun because some of it takes me, I have some pleasure experiences that go deep and they take me into all kinds of shadowy underworld material. Which isn't as much fun. It's 
I would not call those fun, because but they're boy, not. they're pleasurable. I, mm. I, like the release that I can get out of them or the the exploration of myself. So for me, fun is on the lighter side of things. Right. I, I keep coming back to what you said about play. So the shadow realm, there's not a lot of playfulness in there. Uh, trickster energy, though. Okay, that's something else. Right. So right. trickster energy yeah. walks between those it two. It does, yeah. Hermes and his ability to walk to the underworld and back yep. the only god that can do that in the greek pantheon um loki trickster and also super dark yep i mean yeah it's so so there okay, are there could ways be playfulness to... in the dark but i that's, mean think that's about, great. Thank I you think about loki that i think you know when we're talking about like marvel superhero most people are familiar with at least the the basic idea loki isn't good Right. Like, by his very nature, he's not good. He's himself, which is complicated. Yep. I should really say they themselves. I it like Are complicated. Complicated creature. So fun for me. Like I'll get back. Fun for me yep. is playful and stays on the lighter side of that because the lighter side, the trickster, isn't afraid to hurt others right the trickster energy yep. is disruptive and chaotic and mm -hmm. that does not feel uh fun to me even though it can feel playful oh wow okay right so these are these are um less connected concepts than i kind of thought fun and play well, as soon as you start taking words seriously start... for what they mean and yep. start thinking about what they mean to you everything gets more complicated it does so, um, but it's really common in my work to ask people, so what do you do for fun? Mm -hmm. And the number of times people meet me with, um, uh, and that pause can stick around for a while. Um, that's what made me want to put this on this season's list. It's normal to go through periods of time where you're, not really sure what fun is like that that's normal because life is not simple life can get intense sometimes and or you can get bored or you can be going through a depressive state or, or boredom, you know living depression. through a pandemic you know <laughs> these little things that can happen um and or or very real stuff can overturn your boat but fun is for me one of the ways i survive so find, during those times when my, my proverbial boat has been upturned, finding pockets of fun, because fun for me has a, there's an intentionality to it, like where I'm like, yes, oh, agreed. I'm going to yeah. have fun. So when I think about the childlike nature of it, like, let's go play. There's intention in that. Let's go play. The intention is fun, even if it doesn't always wind up being um, playfulness in that sense. That has really helped me. I mean, that's what going to improv class Mm -hmm. um, over the years has mostly been fun and and sometimes challenging and that's actually that's the that's part of the fun is you don't always know what's going to turn up for you so the mystery mystery can be a little bit of the fun for me I don't want to know exactly what to expect which is why um, so we like to go to a bookstore together yes that's definitely one of my fun things and one of the things, it, it is a mystery. What are you going to find? What's there that you didn't know was there? It's part yeah, of the fun. Totally. Um, really, I mean, that's, when I think about fun things to do with you, one of the things I like the most, one of my, my favorite fun activities, especially an outside of the bedroom activity, is wandering around a city I don't know. Yeah. Um, because then we're both experiencing the mystery of What's around the corner? The mystery and the What's discovery. Next? We have had a, a weird habit of only doing that in really hot and really cold weather more often than we not. Have. We and that do decreases about the that. overall fun level. It does. That's about the intentionality, though, it... but also about like prioritizing our fun. Yeah. We have often fit it around the edges. So, yeah. oh, this is the time where it can fit because the kids are doing this other thing, so we can fit some fun in for just us or whatever. Yeah. But it is very important. We've had great success with planning fun, prioritizing and planning fun for us 
on like a monthly basis or whatever specific things. If, yeah, but only if we also release the expectation. The last time That's right. I planned a fun time for us, I got us a hotel, we were all set, we went and we fought the whole time. Yep. The whole time. That wasn't fun. But but that's not totally true. We wound up, you wound up with a headache, and so there wasn't very much sex, but there was still some fun because we found this show to watch, and we wound up watching this show yeah, in a right. hotel room. We could have done this at home, but yep. we wound up watching, well, we binge there. watching this show. Yeah. And really enjoying that. And it was great because when we were doing that, we weren't fighting about the fact that we weren't having sex. Right. Yeah. <laughs> so. Uh, yeah. So we really do not, you know, we're not perfect. We. Lord, no. We fight. We can't always predict what it is that will bring us fun. So we're just figuring it out. So we have made a, a promise to make at least one weekend a month be focused have the focus point be on fun and that's because it's really easy for for the weekend to turn into clean the house do the yeah do the outdoor chores make the next thing happen i'm I, i'm usually undertaking some new project in my business that like that doesn't fit yet into the rest of my schedule right it's easy to shunt those things off to the weekend and then squeeze some family time in and then before you know it, the weekend's over prioritizing a weekend for fun is great but yeah i think there's a, a really big need to relax around whether it will actually wind up being yeah. fun or whether the whole thing has to be fun for mm. it to be a success right because i said well that wasn't any fun but the fighting wasn't fun, but it wasn't the only thing that happened. No, and so, some really funny things happened. Absolutely. In that. I mean, yeah. all the croissants. Exactly. All the croissants. Yep. To try to make it up to me, he went the next morning to a little shop, very carefully ordered exactly the coffee he knew I wanted, and got me three of the pastries that I wanted when I, I, I wanted one. Got got me three of them. That's not actually better for That's me. It's not better. And and the coffee was just completely it was unsweetened. Done wrong. It was just it was completely just, wrong, and he and didn't I taste hadn't it. So he it. came back, and he had just disaster. Here, this is bad and for I, you. Right, <laughs> Have it. right. So, this will make you feel better. Yeah. So in retrospect, very funny. And so actually, it provided even in the moment, some funny, funny memory. Like, wow, yeah, you really tried. Yeah. You were trying. You went out in the and none of the, <laughs> none of this worked. Yep. Oh, well. So, so there is fun to be had because... In keeping our sense of humor. Be, in keeping our sense of humor. And I, trusting that even a, though I had done, done a stupid purpose. thing, not deciding I had done it on purpose, and not deciding that you, you know, knowing that you weren't going to, like, hold it against me. You weren't going to hold a grudge about it. Yeah, so that was an and interesting that's... thing. So you came back. Let's The three pastries was an interesting one. So... Um, I, did, I don't want to have extra sweets around um, me because I get headaches when I have too much sugar. It doesn't work for me. And so that's that was a, one of those moves where it was it was backwards. You yeah. were trying to bring more fun, more pleasure, more yummy to me. Right. But in doing so, you actually gave me something I was going to have to say no. I was going to have Which to control is, yeah, myself right. around. And the thing that helped me get over that is you let me say to you, hey, that's not actually more fun for me. And you just took that and said, right, I I know that. And you apologized. So we could move on. Because I wanted to name it because this is a thing. This has happened before. Yes. Y you bringing me things, gifts to try to make up for stuff yep. or try to make me like you is a thing. But my love language is not gifts. Well, It is the opposite of gifts. It is. Gifts is not the way to win so, me over. So pro tip, that was me giving you what I would have wanted in that situation. Yes. That doesn't do you any good because no. I know we don't line up that way. <laughs> no. We're not the same that way. No. Nope. So. So, okay. So okay. fun is, it's not promised. You can be intentional, yeah. but it's not like you can guarantee its, its outcome. You just can't. That said, it definitely helps to have some ideas it does. for fun. So it one does. of the things that I find really enjoyable is wandering around a new place with you, mm -hmm. which isn't always possible, but bookstores are super fun for me. Bookstores are fun. Museums and are fun. I don't fun. mind wearing, like, so right now wearing a mask is a normal thing to do. So 
a bookstore is a perfectly fine place for me to be walking around. I'm not trying to make a lot of conversation with you. Right. Because we're talking. We're sharing the experience and showing each other books, but we're not trying to have a conversation yeah. masked. Yeah. So I find that to be a particularly pleasant way to get out and about. Yeah. But not be... That's a good one for us. Yeah. Trying to talk. Um, going for a walk goes a long way to fun for me. Yeah. A long way to fun. And I've been really interested by that because, yeah, absolutely. We go out for for a walk and I come back and it's like, well, that was fun. Thank you. What did we do? What was fun? Just the whole this. It was fun. It's even, just nice to be outside, yeah. even if we're just walking in silence. Yeah. So those are some simple things. I'm thinking about fun, though, and I'm instantly thinking about the playfulness of games. I'm thinking about my mixed reaction yep. to games. I have a hard time because I get, um, my mind will not stay on a game very easily. It's it's a lot of work for me to keep my mind focused on the game while somebody else is taking a turn, yep. especially longer strategy games. I, I get bored. I read a book while I'm playing them because other people don't want you to talk to them. So then I'm just sitting there and I'm, that's frustrating to me. So I often will opt out of a game, even though everybody else thinks that it's fun. Um, so I will opt sometimes to sit near everybody that's playing a game, yeah. reading a book. That's fun for me. And the thing <laughs> is, you add a lot of fun to games when you do that. Well, because then I do you'll the, just the sit drop there in. and just <laughs> drop stuff in, and it, it always makes for more fun. I do enjoy that. And, um, and I realize now as we're saying this, that's exactly what my father did. He never, ever played games. Oh. But he would sit near us reading his book. Ah, shit. <laughs> oh, what do you know? <laughs> What are you gonna do with that? What are you gonna do with that? Yep. Huh. Well, you can you can try, but outrunning your genes is rough. <laughs> it is, but and it's so no judgment on that. That's no, no. That's it's great. just funny. I hadn't realized I had when I was a kid. I remember thinking he's no fun, and he used to say, "Well, I don't want to play games because I don't like to." Because he knew he was a poor loser. Mm -hmm. he, he he would just say that he's like, so "Oh, that's... poor loser," so I don't play games. Um, that's social. That's a it was public a, service. It, it was, um, and he was he he was really really angry person when I was a young child. So it was sort of protective, but um, but the thing is, he was he was really smart. I always wanted him on my Trivial Pursuit team, <laughs> so you'd have to really rope him into that. Um, it was so it's not the same reason. I I don't mind losing, but I get bored. So but I have a different bored. reason, yep. but the outcome is the same and. Oh, how funny. Isn't that interesting? Okay, learn so, about myself while we make the podcast. That's, so that's one of the things that I was going to say. Uh, we make a podcast. Yes. This, this is, is fun. This is one of my favorite um, business activities when it comes to wait, fun. By measure of fun, yep. this is definitely yeah. my favorite. Me um, too. And having these conversations with you day to day is different from having them in this recorded way because I also rework the material. So I, I, I will take this and then i'll i'll see what we said and learn about us and yeah i find that exciting and fun too yep um so something that i have found adds fun to the work day is the times when we can both like sit here which here for us oh we record this podcast, on our bed we're sitting on our bed and we will we will work this way too sometimes we'll come up we'll, yeah. we'll get our computers or whatever we need and and sit next to each other so, and work I would put that on the list for me of pleasurable, pleasure versus but fun. not necessarily fun. Okay, this is good. So getting back to these these definitions of, for of me. pleasure versus fun versus joy versus play. But, you know, there is something that's fun um, that we do in this bedroom sometimes that's not sex, um, which is sing. Yes. We that is will fun. sing to each other or with each other. Yep. Um, we also do that in the kitchen, but it, yeah, yeah. that's... That's something that um, I don't always think to do, but when we do, I'm always happy. Yep. Um, playing ukulele together, I find the same way. It's not just pleasure. It's, it's That's actively fun. fun. Yeah. Um, and it's starting to feel like the element that crosses it over from pleasure to fun is um, the, it's unpredictable. Oh, don't yeah. Know what's You're going to discover. Happen. Oh, so, yeah. so funny. So it's just like walking around a city you don't know. Yeah. You're going to discover something. Discovery. And ukulele is not something either of us is particularly good at. Right. And you're good at it in a completely different way That's than right. I am. Yeah. We, have different we have different strengths, strengths. there. So um, we really don't know what we're going to get anytime. And you're better at harmonizing than I am. So, like, we get to play with that. Yep. And, yeah. 
That's funny. But we don't know how it'll all come we together. We really have until no idea. It. This is why we don't record it. No, <laughs> <laughs> that's why we don't record it. <laughs> I love the star stargazing with you. Yeah. I absolutely love that. But I don't know what to do about mosquitoes. So wintertime stargazing yep. is is where it's at for me, which means the jacuzzi. And so that is um there's mosquitoes are not fun for me. They're <laughs> no, that's that's not fun. They are. So pleasure, definitely sitting in the jacuzzi and looking at the stars with you is pleasure and what for me crosses it over into fun is what we talk about when we're doing it. Right, because sometimes it's relaxing but not fun. Yep. Oh, so actually my favorite way to do that is to invite other people over. Yeah. Because you put a few other people in the jacuzzi and all of a sudden now you're you're having a new conversation. So novelty seems mm -hmm. to be the Discovery common thread and novelty. here. That's, that's where I was getting to. And, and that's what made me think, okay, looking up at the stars, you know exactly what you're going to get. <laughs> They're the same all the time, except... We go out for meteor showers because you don't know what you're going to get. Those are really exciting and fun. Yeah, I see shooting stars like every time we're out. You do. I don't yeah. know what the deal is with that. I don't I don't know why I'm always seeing shooting stars. But um, so novelty. Now I'm thinking about Esther Perel's um, very famous saying about, you know, not we're always seeking security and novelty. Mm -hmm. And that relates to my work, the work I do every single day. People want security and they want freedom and novelty, right? It's it's a tension. It's it's paradoxical that we that we want both of these things. And fun is that edge where you're getting the novelty that you want without crossing the threshold into negative arousal states or anxiety right. yeah. or mm -hmm. tension, right? Except roller coasters. Roller coasters, you intentionally put yourself into a spot where you're going to feel anxiety as you're clicking upwards and then the excitement of of the falling and not dying yep right so that's <laughs> so there's something so I mean, we do want that well, tension there's a great big mental trick in there too um so there is an element of risk with a roller coaster but the roller coaster builders try to bring that down to zero right so you're trusting that they will mm -hmm. minimize your risk and maximize your fun right so you get to experience anxiety in in a very um, in a in the context of being in a trusting stance. Right. So security and novelty don't have to be at odds. You can find novelty in a secure situation. Well, the, but it's not terribly common because, by definition, you don't know what you're getting, so, so you don't the, know what. Right. It's so secure. the work that I do, though, so when I'm working with couples who are transitioning from monogamy to consensual non-monogamy in particular, right. or they're they're building a creative monogamy, but especially folks who are going from monogamy to consensual non-monogamy, a thing that happens um, is that I provide them some um, some safety buffers and some, I, I can provide some information that can stop them from going off the rails. I can provide support when things mm -hmm. look overwhelming. And that, that, that it's not just, it's not an instruction guide. You can read a book about this. The, um, the safety of being contained in, while you're going, while you're on the roller, roller coaster, I want to know that the containment that's device is yes, there. Yes, exactly. And that's the right. role I feel myself playing when I'm doing that work. And I like it. I enjoy that because, because I know so many of the bumps and turns and the ways that the forces act upon us mm -hmm. that it doesn't feel scary to me. It feels exciting. I'm, I don't have to be frightened of it because I understand the mechanisms that are at work. Yeah, right. Okay, well, that's interesting. I that see that you have a list of other fun things, though, and I'm guessing people would like to hear other okay. fun things. Well, the thing is, you, you hit a lot of them already because they're things that we do, but um, uh, <laughs> I find this fun and not entirely secure. We've, um, we've gone back and forth at uh, practicing and learning to dance together. Yes. And I love that, and I don't make time for it because it scares the hell out of me. <laughs> And so it it's like there's like an obstacle me, I, I have to get it. over yeah. in order. And I think about it and then I don't do it because it's a little scary for me, but I love it. So, yeah. So movement. Movement. Lots, lots of kinds of mm -hmm. movement, but in particular, dance, dance for you. It really is fun. I watch you. You you get all 
You get dance giddy. In fact, I get so giddy that I stop doing it well. <laughs> I get distracted by how much fun well, it is. You do dance like a Peanuts character when you're very giddy. Oh, that's, yeah. You just kind not, of It's not um, graceful. Well, you're but you're like a little kid. You're so excited to be very moving much. to the rhythm of the music that then you're just basically moving at like a, a 16th speed all yeah. the time. I could probably get a, a gig as a performance artist. Yeah, it's very odd. Dancing that way. <laughs> Um, and, and in that line of movement, uh, something else that we have liked to do is play with the, the pod poi and like yes! circus, circus toys. Um, what yeah. do we call those things? The well, I have, I contact have the juggling, contact and, juggling uh, balls and the, the, batons, the de devil sticks, Diablo, Diablo. Um, we have silks out in the, in the rec house that are well secured. Yep. Um, and also just, so we, we set ourselves up a CrossFit gym when we closed our gym. Yep. And so we have that, and that space at this point is essentially a playground. Yes. Um, sometimes we're very focused and working on a particular goal, but most of the time we go out to play. That's right. Um, and that, that was on my, that was further down do, my how list many, there. How many yep. pull-ups can I do now? And can I, handstands. Handstands are fun. Yes. Archery Hand is stands. fun. Archery. I okay. haven't done that in a while. So shared activity is fun, but here's the thing. Separate activity is fun too. That's right. So one of the things I like about archery is when you come out to watch me do it mm -hmm. um, because it let it releases any competitiveness yep. um and you're participating and you might be commenting Which is good, a little you beat bit the pants off me <laughs> I mean, you could wear but a yeah, kilt it's just it's fine <laughs> right and solve that problem um it letting myself enjoy something in your presence without needing to include you directly mm. took a little practice because there was a habit toward enmeshment yep. where I thought we had to enjoy the same thing at the same time. But in fact, watching you come back in, you will sometimes go down to the river and just, so we live on a river and you'll go down and just get in it um, when it's cold. And you'll go down because for you, the plunge and all of that and being in the nature is very, very invigorating. Yeah, There's a lot of fun for me in watching you come back. And it, it like really uh, genuine fun. I feel compersive. I feel this oh. compersion of like, oh, that's cool. Oh, I know you were in your element and you challenged yourself, and and I feel the fun of that, and it's yeah, awesome. Totally love that. And for me, making things. Yes. Making things. Yes. Yep. I I love I anything I can make with my hands. I am down for. So and I do and I love doing that together. But I I've learned in the last few years that. My teachery phase around making things with my hands yep. has shifted. I used to teach. I used to teach um, sewing and knitting and crochet. And I used to teach. Um, I've even taught pattern design and all sorts of hand skills. And now I just want to enjoy doing them and have fun doing them. Yeah. So it's challenging sometimes because I'll think, well, I want to have fun doing this activity, but I don't. it won't be fun for me. If I'm teaching. Right. And I have. And that hasn't yeah. always been true. Sometimes I loved it. And it was very fun. Yeah. And I have a complex around like physical creativity, making things. It trips me up. It's not as bad as it was, but it's still a thing. So I know that if, if we're making things together, that can run into trouble. Something that has been a challenge for us about finding fun is getting on the same pace now, I yeah. am not a fan of, in mm -hmm. general, like in life, needing to be running at the same pace as your partner because you're going to be doing different things, yep. different um, trajectories. You know, you're going to move at different paces. But I'm a much faster cook than you are. Like, <laughs> yeah. Like yep. by an order of magnitude faster. Yep. Um, so cooking with you is fun now that I have figured that out and I can say, okay, you take this and you do this part while I like... <sighs> I, I work at my pace and or I pour myself a glass of kombucha and drink that and, and chill out while you move at the pace. How many Etch sketches did you make today, buddy? Um, 96. Well, no, you just you do move at a different pace, but you're also very precise and I'm not. Yep. Um, so it's just different. But it used to not be fun to cook with you. Because it Cause I just slowed you down and it just frustrated you. And you would read the instructions over and over and over yep. again because you wanted to get it just right. And yep. my intuitive sense was like, well, this is fun because I'm working yeah, from the intuitive. Yeah, because you're using the intuitive sense. So it's this. not as fun to do it the other way. So yeah. it was um, figuring out how we could both be ourselves 
mm-hmm. in a shared activity. And so some activities, it turns out, nope. Yeah. They're just Doesn't not fun for us to share yep. because we're, nope, we just can't quite get an alignment around and them. Knowing or we that, haven't figured it out yet. Let's us avoid pitfalls of try expecting to have fun and end up it being the opposite. Yeah. Which and, is so much worse than just something that you're not sure if it's going to be fun or not. And then it isn't. And it's just a thing. But if you're expecting fun and you don't get it, that's tough. Yeah. Well, so here, I think you could sum up a lot of this with it takes experimentation. And yeah. it's worth trying stuff out and, and and then revisiting it. Like we tried watercoloring together a few times before we realized yeah your frustrations around not being good at it but having no interest in practicing it right. at all yep. meant that i couldn't have fun because it it just brought up this it, it was like this glaring difference between us yeah. because it comes very easily to me not that i'm great at it but it, but i don't stress over well, it well also it you don't stress is. over how good you are at it i don't I care do i'm just right i just do it for fun reason. and it doesn't matter um so like we tried it we didn't just try it once we tried it a half dozen times and found that that activity we haven't figured out a way for it to be fun yep. and letting it go yeah that's fine there's plenty of stuff to do plenty of other stuff to try yep. and i hope we haven't exhausted our own trying trying yeah. stuff out you I, know i mean i think we get into habits and when i ask people this question often i'll ask during an intake session i'll ask what people do for fun and sometimes they don't have an answer And it's because they've even forgotten that they do things that are fun. So they're sort of racking their So there are some, but they forget that they're there. Yeah. Yeah. Because over the course of time, we're working together and and they they talk about things. I'm like, oh, that sounds like fun. Like, yeah, it was. It totally was. So. Oh, so there's two. Okay. What do you do for fun? What do you do that is fun? Those are two different questions because like, oh, I'm setting out to have fun. What do I do versus what do you find in your life that is fun? Yeah, absolutely. Mm. And I know people, for instance, who would love, they they would, packing up and going to spend the day at the beach is just Mm -hmm. like the pinnacle of fun. They like everything. I hate every part of that. I hate the packing up for it. I hate the planning of it. I hate being on the sand. I hate the sun. I just, going and spending the day on the beach, no. It's just not for me. It took me decades to admit that I do not like spending the day on the beach and I don't like beets. Those two things. <laughs> Beaches and beets. <laughs> Beaches no, and beets. Just not my thing. So I do <laughs> like to go to the beach, but I like to go at sunset and sunrise and I like to go. So, but learning that, um, that, that, that way of spending my intentional, I'm going to create fun just backfires actually lets me relax. We do still take the kids to the beach sometimes and we do all the things, but I do not plan on having fun. I plan on having essentially a productive day of making a pleasant time for everyone. Uh-huh. And that's it. I don't try to have fun because that's not fun for me. It's the same to go to Six Flags. Yep. Not fun for me. It's just not. But I can create a day for other people. So as long as I don't get resentful that other people are having fun because I'm not, you know, I set myself up for that, then I'm in good shape. Um, and then it's about filling up my cup too. Yeah. So what is fun for me? And realistically, a lot of the things that are fun for me aren't fun for the family. So I do them on my own. Yep. They're not fun for you. So I do them on my own. And that's totally fine with yeah. me. Yeah. That's, that's good. Fun. More fun is good. And I don't want to take fun away from you. And I think this is something that was in the early part of our relationship a lot was you'd be doing something fun and I'd, I'd want to do it with you. Yep. A very part of the enmeshment and and such that we've been working on. But I'd, I'd want to do it with you and not be left out, little brother. <laughs> such a little brother. Um, and then it wouldn't be fun for you and it wouldn't be fun for me. And so now there was less fun. Yeah. You know, the habits of enmeshment, I, I find them cropping up all around. They're, mm-hmm. they're just there. Um, so even if it doesn't seem like in general your relationship has that as a big issue, I think... Fun is a good place to look for it. Do you do yeah. you hang on to each other's coattails? Or is it okay to just go have fun alone? Or do you resent your partner if they're going to have fun? And if so, right. is that because you're not willing to prioritize your own fun? And you're not willing to negotiate for what you need for it? Because we, we've had that. And 
happen and it's it's generally about you not willing to prioritize I, I'm pretty selfish this yeah. way. I will selfish is not a dirty word for no. me. I am selfish. I will take the time to have my activities, to have my fun. You have struggled with this a lot. And I don't know. So then you ride on my coattails yep. doing the things that I think are fun that you don't think are fun. And then we wind up in that situation. But <laughs> so you can let me know if this is a new, if this is a new insight, but I'm just noticing now, or I think I'm just noticing now, I avoid doing fun things that might leave you feeling left out. Oh, yeah, I know that. And I, so that's not the insight. Yeah. The insight is, um, and this is minor, I do it because I don't want to feel left out. That's minor. But actually, there, there's a newer one. I think that not just in my first marriage, but in other relationships too, there was back pressure over, like, um, I got resentment for having fun. I yeah. experience resentment from other people about having fun, and I'm still trying to avoid it. Okay, I see two things there. One, that resentment about having fun. Like, uh, my life was full of what my father called sober Susies. Uh -huh. There's nothing wrong with being sober. That's that's great. You don't need to drink. Um, but what he meant is sober in the old-fashioned sense of the way. Uh, like, wouldn't have fun. Right. So we had at our family, like big dinners, there would be like the, he would call it the sober Su Susie end of the table and the fun end of the table. And he was right. One end, no jokes were made. Everything was business-like, past the potatoes. It was all, and you just, you were like stoically grateful. And the <laughs> other side, we were joking, we're throwing dinner rolls at each other. Yeah. And yeah, it's, uh, some people just don't want to have fun. And yeah. my mom and the people she was raised with, kind of, that's kind of where they hung out in that zone. Not all the time, but it was predominant. Mm -hmm. And so the pressure to not have fun around those folks is big. But also, some people are anti-hedonic. They, yep. like, they really... Against it's pleasure. Like, it's against their value system yeah. to be experiencing joy. I bet they wouldn't admit it most of the time but um it's right up there with people who are against spending money right like wait, yeah but all, all the time you know like that that's just it's a it's a um a scarcity and a clinging and and also a judgment about how other people should should experience their life and uh, yeah i remember witnessing that in you all the time you wouldn't well i mean we have the jacuzzi we have because when you got divorced it was the you first like, thing I did. I can buy a jacuzzi? I'm like, yeah, it's been your money the whole time. I don't know what you're talking about. about yeah, anytime. go ahead. Have fun. Um, your fun is yours to make. Yeah. And mine is mine. And then there's collaborative fun. But um, I hope you feel empowered to push back if you feel like I'm aiming resentment at you. Yeah, and I know fun. I know I you're could. not. It's imagine. But it could happen. But it also could happen. So you could name the feeling. Mm -hmm. So imagine that you were in that spot where you're having fun. Um, I don't know whether you have an example. You're having fun, you're doing something, you are enjoying it, and you're also feeling pressure from me, or you're nervous about the pressure that you'll get when I get home. You could Simply ask, can we talk about a feeling I'm having? It's a story I'm telling myself. Yeah, okay. I don't think this is necessarily happening, but this is what's coming up for me. Because something doesn't have to be true for it to be what's coming up for you. Yeah. So my my example of that is when I'm playing games with the kids. And I know you don't like to play games. So even if you wanted to have fun, you couldn't have fun doing what we were doing. And so I think you might feel left out or like you're, you know, don't that you'd want uh, to be spending time some other way. Cool. Now, with your rational grown-up brain on, not in that situation yeah. right now, what do you think I'm actually feeling? Like you can do something you want to do. Oh, thank God. Someone's <laughs> thank playing God. with the kids. Yeah, somebody's <laughs> playing with the kids and it's not me. Yeah. I have never felt left out because other people were playing a game. Right. Because I don't want to do that. And you've said that before. I know that's true. But, so why, so so there it is. So it's it comes from some other story I have in inside me. Yeah. Um, and, and it doesn't apply to you. But there's the thing. You name that. It's a story you have inside of you. And rather than asking me to fix something that isn't even a thing I'm doing or right. being sure that you know the truth. Mm-hmm. 
even if I'm very clearly enjoying myself, you know, in the other room doing something else or whatever, yeah. um, we can talk about the feeling without, yeah. without knowing for sure that this is true yep. and what's happening and just explore it. And so far, what I have done with it is um, just let it sit there as part of the experience. And, you know, it decreases the fun for me. So I think it would be way better to just say, so this feeling is coming up. Yeah. That's all. Like, it's not your problem. But I just, hey, you can hear something this you can know about me. This feeling is coming up in you. In yep. me. And mm -hmm. I saw it happen, actually, the other day. I came in. You guys were playing. I came in the door from being out. And you leapt up and left the game to come like attend to me and I'm like aren't you in the middle of a game I'm <laughs> yeah and the kids all I know what that. will happen right and they do. I um and I I, I've I released you back into like mm -hmm. go go back yeah you were doing something you get to have fun for fun's sake and nothing else right so when somebody asks me what I do for fun I might say nothing because I don't want them to know I do anything for fun because they might resent me for my fun. Okay. <laughs> well, now we have a new tangle for Ken to unwind. <laughs> I think it's just, I think it's actually a pretty straightforward one to unwind. I think there are some unconscious things, but so as you're out there in, in listening to this podcast land, um, yeah, fun, fun might not be simple. Like there might be things that you trip over. We have some way. baggage and some so, stuff to unpack. So yeah, um, hopefully you have um, have supportive people around you can talk to about it. Yeah, and and keep playing and having fun. Yeah, and and do the unpacking. Yep. Yeah, don't wait to have fun don't, until don't, it's unpacked. It, it, right. Yeah. Awesome. Okay. Well, till next time. Keep talking to each other. Thanks so much for tuning in to this episode. I've got one more thing I'd like to share with you, and that you're just going to need to hop over to the website listentojolie.com. There you can grab my top five relationship guides for free right now. Go get those guides. They're great. They're easy to implement conversations that will help you take action in creating the love you really want. It's my mission to make absolutely everything talk aboutable. She managed to help me be able to talk about stuff that I once couldn't even imagine saying out loud. Now I speak openly with my, my lovers, my friends, my family, and you um, on a podcast. Out loud relationship work really can change everything. That really is a wonder. One of my favorite things in the whole world. So when you're feeling the rough edges, when things aren't going the way that you'd hoped in your relationships, I want you to remember that relationships can be messy and that's good news. <laughs>